A long-standing research interest of mine is understanding how poverty and shocks to income affect conflict in fragile and developing countries. When I talk about price shocks, I'm referring to large-scale changes in the price of commodities that are produced in a given country. So for example, in the context of Colombia, we essentially used what we think of as a natural experiment induced by massive movements in commodity prices like coffee and oil and very unique data on conflict to study this question. The research approach that we used was both innovative and data-driven using the methodological approach that lies at the crux of the Pearson Institute. What we knew was countries that were poorer in terms of per capita income tended to have higher risk of conflict. What we didn't know is why that occurred and if that actually had something to do with wages or not. In Colombia, we were particularly lucky because I worked with a Colombian collaborator who had event-based data. It actually codes over 21,000 violent events on the basis of over 21 major newspapers and on the basis of oral reports in rural areas of Colombia that then allow us to have a complete picture of the violent events that are taking place there. So we were able to look at two different types of income effects. For example, for agricultural commodities, things like coffee, where people and labor is a large input in the production process. When there's something like a fall in the price of coffee, and someone like a coffee farmer in Colombia is made worse off. They have the option of either producing coffee or potentially joining an armed group, like a guerrilla group. Coffee prices fell by almost 70% between 1997 and 2003, and this led to 18% more guerrilla attacks and 31% more paramilitary attacks in the coffee producing region relative to the non-coffee producing region. In contrast to that, for commodities that might be capital intensive in the sense that they use a lot of machinery in their production process, so like oil and gold. There we actually expect this predation incentive, this sort of rapacity effect as we describe it, dominates. For example, when you have an increase in the price of oil, there's greater revenue that's collected from the government in taxing that oil, and paramilitary groups actually extort this revenue from local mayors and municipal authorities between 1980 and 2003, oil prices increased by over 130%, and this actually led to 14% greater paramilitary attacks in the oil-producing areas of Colombia. The research that we're doing is highly relevant for a number of countries and contexts around the world. Recent research has shown the results seem to hold in sub-Saharan Africa in the context of traditional civil conflict. They're relevant for understanding whether economic shocks affect participation in drug gangs in places like Central America and Mexico. They're relevant for thinking about whether income plays a role in radicalization and participation in religious violence, which is highly relevant for the Middle East. This ties to the mission of the Pearson Institute because the Pearson Institute is all about using data-driven approaches to both studying and mitigating conflicts. We're hopeful that if we conduct policy-relevant research, we'll be able to generate insights that translate into policies that have direct effects in terms of improving people's lives and mitigating the circumstances of conflict that they face.